Hi there, welcome to Switch Mania. I am Clarence and today, we'll talk about the best Nintendo Switch games on sale. We will be covering the UK, EU, US, Australia, and Canada eShop. But first and foremost, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you want to see more of this series, please leave a like, remember to subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to receive future notifications. Likes and subscriptions help keep the channel alive. First on our list is Fury Unleashed. Fury Unleashed is a game that can be played over and over again because it has big guns, big challenges, and even bigger rewards. Fury Unleashed's fast-paced design and combo system make the game enjoyable to play. If you don't mind a roguelike style, I think you'll definitely enjoy it. As the main character, Fury, you must fight your way through a comic book to help your creator overcome his artistic doubts. A roguelite that is both enjoyable and challenging. Fortunately, dying doesn't hurt as much as it does in some other games in this genre. Genre. The learning curve in hard mode is steep, but easy mode has parameters that can be changed to make the game easier to learn. Continue shooting, looting, and maintaining your combo to keep enemies at bay and gain health with each kill. You can even complete a run with just one continuous combo. Next is Sukuna, of Rice and Ruin. This game is the best blend of an RPG, a 2D platformer, and a farming simulator. Sukuna, of Rice and Ruin looks and sounds fantastic, and the story will compel you to root for all of the characters. Sukuna of Rice and Ruin is an excellent game because it includes realistic, in-depth sections about rice farming, fighting skills practice, and unexpected character reveals and growth. It's interesting to see Sukuna mature as a person. Her reason for living is tested, and she learns to prioritize others over her herself. She must also make a sacrifice she would not have made at the start of the game. The game has a good mix of farming and fighting, so you can do a variety of things and have a good time for a long time. Next is Fly Punch Boom. The multiplayer mode in Fly Punch Boom is polished and fun, and the single player mode is just good enough to be a bonus. You may believe you were born to play a game that essentially puts you in an anime royal rumble, but your eyes and reactions aren't up to the task. It will take some getting used to the insanely fast-paced action in Fly Punch Boom. The good news is that it will be well worth your time and effort, and you will have a great time doing it. Fly Punch Boom is a fun game that you can play with your friends to pass the time. Even though the single-player campaign lacks variety, playing with a group of friends will be entertaining and frustrating. Jolly Punch has created a game that is simple to learn but difficult to master. It's a fresh take on the genre. So, if you want a new fighting game that doesn't follow the same pattern, Fly Punch Boom is worth your time. Next is Railway Empire, Nintendo Switch Edition. The Switch port is a high quality fully functional version of the original game. The graphics have been downgraded, which is to be expected, but this is made up for by the fact that you can now play Railway Empire on the go without bringing your laptop. When it comes to the kind of experience a simulator gives, the portable form factor is really the best way to go. Overall, I really liked Railway Empire, which you can tell by the fact that my shoulders hurt from leaning over my Switch for 10 hours. This definitely filled a need for me, and from now on, it will be the game I play when I want something like Railroad Tycoon. I'm glad it's now on the Switch, because I can bring it with me on long flights. I would definitely recommend this to anyone who likes trains or this kind of intense economic simulation game. Railway Empire has a few small bugs that make it less fun at times, but once you figure out how to use the tracks, it's a very good game. Next is Beautiful Desolation. Beautiful Desolation demonstrates that the Brotherhood is capable of creating visually appealing as well as story-driven point-and-click adventures. It accomplishes this by expanding on the game formula developed by Stasis. Despite the game's desolate setting, there is something beautiful about it. I'm not referring to the graphics, rather, I'm referring to the overall charm of the game and its characters. When I first heard about Beautiful Desolation, I assumed it would be a gun-toting, adrenaline-pumping, stressful RPG. Instead, it was about real people trying to find their way home, with genuine dialogue and meaningful choices. Choices. Even though there was a lot of searching, returning, and crying over lost items, it was still a worthwhile journey. Next is Dex. Dex is a fantastic cyberpunk version of the Deus Ex game series that manages to do so on a shoestring budget. The world and characters are entertaining and interesting, and it's clear that the title was created with great care. There's a lot of fighting but it's not particularly exciting. You'll enjoy Dex a lot if you don't mind having to push through boring fights to get to the good parts of the game. It's not Deus Ex on the Nintendo Switch, but it's a lot closer than you might think. Dex is a well-crafted game with everything you'd expect from a cyberpunk adventure. If that sounds like a bad way to discuss something, it isn't. There's a lot of love for its world, and even though it's similar to other cyberpunk games, getting your hands dirty and exploring its seedy, nasty world is always fun. This game should appeal to fans of both RPGs and Metroid Vanias. A charming little mix that takes a while to reveal its charms, but it's well worth the wait if you have the time. Next up, 
Golf Club Wasteland. Don't be concerned if the worst happens and face the end of civilization on Earth. You'll be able to book a trip to another planet, but you'll have to be one of the world's filthiest rich people. Normally, the goal of an arcade game is not to send a social message, but Golf Club Wasteland does just that. The fact that it's also entertaining to play is an added bonus. Fans of puzzles and platformers will find it both relaxing and challenging. Golf Club Wasteland is a thought-provoking piece. Its story has been told on the radio and in your golfer's diary, and it only gets better once you beat the game. This makes for a positive overall experience. It's important to note that the audio is looping and that there will eventually be nothing Nothing new to hear on the radio, but it's a great way to tell a story orally. Because this is Demagogue Studios' first project, I'm looking forward to seeing how they grow as developers. There is a lot of talent and creativity on display, and if everything goes as planned, barring an environmental disaster, their next title will be one to keep an eye out for. Next is Aspire, INA's Tale. Despite its flaws, Aspire, INA's Tale was a pleasure to play. The creators did an excellent job of creating a world that is both beautiful and interesting. The puzzles are challenging, and the short story is intriguing. Aspire, INA's Tale is still one of my favorite games. Despite a few hiccups, it was enjoyable to explore the large old tower and solve puzzles with INA. The show's true star, however, is the fantastic art style. Aspire, INA's Tale is a visually stunning game that will keep your mouth open the entire time. Aspire, INA's Tale is a daring game that creates an intriguing world. The great design is consistent throughout, making each area enjoyable to explore. The puzzles are unique and provide a good level of challenge, but the platforming sections are difficult to navigate. Even though the game isn't particularly long, this memorable stroll through a lovely gallery is well worth your time. Next is Arietta of Spirits. Arietta of Spirits won't blow you away like some of the best Zelda-inspired games but it's still a good game. That doesn't make it a classic, but it's entertaining while it lasts. Despite the fact that they slow the story down, it is full of emotional and significant moments. Even though the combat and world design can become tedious, there are numerous cool boss fights and opportunities to learn new skills. So, if you're looking for a unique Zelda-style adventure that moves at a comfortable pace, Arietta of Spirits will not disappoint. Arietta of Spirits is a charming action-adventure story about friendship, family, and death. The story is moving and full of significance. Arietta and her new spirit friend Arco fight for a better world while also attempting to stop the monsters who are threatening the small island. Even though the story can be completed in about 5 hours, you can change the difficulty level and play again. Next is Amnesia Collection. Despite the fact that the Amnesia Collection contains three games from the same series, they are all very different. The Dark Descent is a significant step forward for the horror genre, despite some technical issues. Justine is a brief but intriguing experiment in gruesome puzzle solving, while a machine for pigs simplifies the original systems but compensates with a much more engaging story. It's a true time capsule, ideal for those who have already scared themselves to death with Outlast and layers of fear and want something else to chill their blood before Halloween. Amnesia Collection is a faithful recreation of the original horror series. Even in handheld mode, the gameplay and scares are excellent, despite the outdated graphics. Even though I doubt I'll ever play it this way, being able to take Amnesia with me more easily is always a plus in my book. If you've never played Amnesia, there's no better time than now to get started. Next is Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments. Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishments is a thrilling detective puzzle game that immerses players in a masterfully crafted Sherlock Holmes story. With one existing Sherlock Holmes case and five new cases created specifically for the game, Crimes and Punishments does an excellent job of solving mysteries. The player has a lot of leeway in deciding how to approach each case and what to do next. Even though the graphics on the Nintendo Switch aren't as good as they could be and the controls can be a little awkward at times, this is a very engaging experience that will keep fans of detective stories interested. Overall, this is the best Sherlock Holmes game I've seen, and it's an excellent way for the consulting detective to make his Switch debut. This is not a sloppy downgrade, as developer Frogwares has created a full-featured and engaging experience from start to finish, which may come too soon. It looks fantastic and performs admirably. The only drawbacks are some minor annoyances and some weak puzzles that you can skip. The game's tolerance for mistakes makes it feel less predetermined and inevitable than other detective games, which is pretty cool. It's ironic that it took one of the form's oldest characters to come up with such a novel idea. Next is Thea, The Awakening. Thea, The Awakening is designed to keep you busy for a long time because there are numerous ways to win and numerous strategies to employ. A single game can have hundreds of turns, but winning only unlocks new quests and options. The game's complexity makes it fun in a variety of ways, but it also makes it difficult to get into. I might have given up if I hadn't seen a YouTube video of a game being played through and explained as it went. This game 
game will keep you awake at night because it is so much fun to play and has a unique world and story that will keep you interested. Thea, The Awakening has a lot of positive aspects. Almost all of the text is spoken, and it's cool that you can add more people to your group, fight head-on, or let the game handle it for you, and change things around. Next is Die for Valhalla. Die for Valhalla is an enjoyable mix of various types of games. It's primarily a side-scrolling beat-em-up, and like most of them, it's more enjoyable to play with friends. There is still a lot to do for a single player, so if you enjoy the genre and Norse mythology, consider purchasing this one. Die for Valhalla exemplifies how 2D side-scrolling games have evolved over time. Combining fast-paced action, cute visuals, and some unexpected ways to handle action, which always looks and feels satisfying. Next is Wingspan. There are already many excellent board games available for the Nintendo Switch. Wingspan is either the best or one of the best in the world. Even though the developers were fortunate to begin with such a beautiful and well-designed game, they did not simply copy and paste it to create a boring digital release or, worse, muck it up by attempting to change it in some way. Instead, they demonstrated genuine respect and appreciation for what makes Wingspan so special. The developers of this game have used the video game medium to enhance the experience without changing what makes the game fun in the first place. Wingspan is nothing short of perfect on the Nintendo Switch. Wingspan is an excellent example of how a board game can be nearly perfectly translated into a fun and useful video game. Almost every aspect of this game has been carefully considered and designed, and players will be greeted by a comprehensive tutorial, a stunning audiovisual world, an addictive multiplayer mode, and sharp, well-tuned controls. Wingspan should be used as a model for converting board games into video games. Next is Children of Morta. Children of Morta is one of 2019's best surprises, so keep an eye out for it. Because there is a progression system and unlockables, even a failed 20-minute run will give you something that will help you on your next run. Even if you don't like roguelites as much as I do, you'll enjoy the game's variety and action. Even better, it's impossible not to be drawn in by the Bergson family's struggle to stay alive and together in the face of a powerful evil. A two-player co-op mode is the cherry on top of this beautifully crafted game. Children of Morta is a must-play regardless of how you play it. Next is Moonlighter. Moonlighter exudes a strong sense of harmony. I can discuss how fantastic the animation is, how fantastic the music is, and how the art style draws us into the world despite the fact that the story is brief. Even though the story ends too quickly, Moonlighter maintains a good balance of business and action until the very end. Overall, Moonlighter is a fantastic game that is more than the sum of its parts. It appeals to roguelike fans, action RPG fans, and even lifestyle sim fans. It's a fun-to-play grinding RPG game that comes highly recommended for any platform. Next is Death End Request. On the Nintendo Switch, Death End Request is making a name for itself. It has a good balance of cute anime-style graphics and violent and bloody scenes that are necessary for the story. As the end game approaches, a sad mood sets in because Sheena and her sweet smile won't be around much longer. World Odyssey must be playable multiple times if you want to find all of the game's clues and enjoy how messed up the world is. Aside from from some confusion about the plot, there aren't many negative aspects to the game. The various difficulty levels allow less experienced players to enjoy the story's many layers, while more experienced players can delve into the battle system. Next is Mega Dimension Neptunia 7. Mega Dimension Neptunia 7 has a plethora of side quests that allow you to play for well over 60 hours. The new Game Plus mode allows you to keep different items and stats after completing the game, and there are three different endings to discover, so there is plenty of replay value. The endearing characters make every game enjoyable, even if only for a short time. This is ideal for Nintendo Switch users who like to play on the go. The majority of Neptunia games were released on the PlayStation Vita, which was not the most popular handheld system even when it was released. More Neptunia games for the Switch are hoped for. Neptune and her pals now have a home on this hybrid console, and their amusing and silly exploits will win over new fans. Next is Mary Skelter 2. Compile Heart has proven that they can create a great DRPG with Mary Skelter 2. Every aspect of this entry has been refined to near perfection. The labyrinths are enjoyable to explore, and despite their numerous tricks, they never become overwhelming. Instead, they lend the adventure a distinct flavor that is uncommon in dungeon crawlers. When it comes to battle systems, the developer has gone to great lengths to ensure that this isn't just a one-dimensional experience. You can launch a full-fledged attack, but your ally's mental health may suffer putting you at risk for Blood Skelter, a powerful attack. Plus, it's impossible to say no to a better version of the first game. Overall, any fan of the genre should own this.
Next is This War of Mine, Complete Edition. This War of Mine immerses the player in an intriguing war environment and employs unique gameplay mechanics to present a series of intense challenges that will captivate anyone who picks it up. Despite some technical issues that should be addressed, This War of Mine works well as a story about war and survival. This War of Mine is likely one of the first modern games to successfully combine gameplay with a strong message while avoiding ludonarrative dissonance. This roguelike game is a masterpiece and one of the best indie games for the Nintendo Switch. And last, but not the least, South of the Circle. South of the Circle is an audacious title for a game about serious issues. It's a novel way of telling a story because it employs flashbacks to piece together a larger narrative. State of Play is also concerned with the people who play it. They don't oversimplify things and leave you to figure out how things work for yourself. The beautiful design and great music make this a memorable experience. South of the Circle is a beautiful game with a great little story and the creators made a concerted effort to use cinematic techniques to make it more dramatic. South of the Circle stands out from the crowd because it is unlike most other video games. The majority of games are like dull, repetitive Hollywood movies. Different is always interesting and will continue to be so. I'm just glad the developers created a compelling narrative to accompany the intriguing techniques they employed. That's all guys. I hope this video was helpful in deciding which game to play, and thank you for checking out the list. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you at the next one. Thank you.